What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome. Bike to the channel. Welcome. Bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. And today we're diving into three must own. Yep. You, you have to draft these guys in your 2021 fantasy football draft. We're talking about three running backs not being taken in the first round. Okay. I could sit here and tell you, hey, Christian McCaffrey's pretty good. Dalvin Cook, Sign me the fuck up, but you can't draft them unless you have a top five pick. And look at it this way. Every single fantasy player, all of y'all have the ability to draft every single player not drafted in the first round. Let that marinate with you for a little bit. This is get your guy season. Fucking ADP. If you like a player, draft that player. There's nothing worse in life. This is just straight up life lesson, business 101. There's nothing worse in life than having a gut feeling, than liking a player, than liking a certain thing, and someone persuades you off of that thing, and then that thing becomes the thing, and you fucked up because you listened to somebody else, okay? It's okay to go all in on your guy, <clears throat> Miles Sanders, and be wrong about it, because at least it was your gut. It was your gut, and it was your heart, okay? We don't want to live with regrets, and today I'm going to tell you three guys that you're going to regret passing on if you do not draft them this year outside of the first round. This is following week two of preseason, okay? There's two more games left today. I'm filming this on Sunday. You guys are watching it on Sunday. There's two more games left today. There's the Giants and the Browns, and then there's the 49ers and the Chargers, which I'm actually very intrigued, and I should probably wait to film this video because one of the guys in today's video is playing in tonight's game. But, you know, I like to put myself out there and look like a fucking moron sometimes. And I know a lot of you guys are waiting to hear what I have to say about Miles Gaskin. I will talk about Miles Gaskin at the end of this video because I went on a little bit of a spree this week. I went on a little bit of like a of a hit spree on Miles Gaskin based on his week one usage. And I will talk about him because he was in my do not draft running back list. I will throw him at the end of the video because this is a video about running backs that you have to draft. All right. I'll timestamp it down below for you guys. And that's it. So let's tuck our shirts in. Let's stop yelling. Let's eat. And real quickly, Animals Punishment, Animals Woods Escapade is premiering tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Come back to YouTube. Come back to the channel if you want to watch Animals spend 18 hours unencumbered in the woods trying to survive. Premiering on the channel at 6 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. So I've watched a lot of preseason games so far. I've gone back and used NFL Game Pass. I've watched all of the starter snaps. I have read way too many tweets about first team usage. I have we read way too many articles. I've listened to way too many podcasts. And if there is one, there's one thing that stands far superior to just about every other piece of information that I've read, seen, or listened to, it is that Najee Harris is going to be one of the top three running backs this year in terms of straight up bell cow usage. It's what we thought. We have this long history of Mike Tomlin using workhorse running backs. I've talked about this in many of my videos, dating back to Willie Parker all the way up until the most recent James Conner, whatever, right? And all a million running backs in between, all averaging over 20 opportunities per game. Then they use their first round draft capital on Najee Harris, and he's a 225 pound back that you know can handle the kind of workload that Mike Tomlin likes to give to one of his back. This is all projection, right? You might say, ah, it's a rookie. We don't really know what they're going to do. So we have three preseason games now because they played in the Hall of Fame game of Najee Harris usage. And Najee Harris has played just about damn near every first team starter snap 45 of 51. That is 88% of the snaps. In this backfield, the single highest rate last year was 77% by Miles Sanders. It was followed by like David Montgomery was right there. James Robinson was right there. No one even came close to what Najee Harris is seeing right now in terms of just the snap share. Anthony McFarlane has like five snaps with the starters out of a possible 51. Najee Harris is going to be used on every single down in every situation this year for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's going to be a fucking problem for people who pass on him. We have seen him. He's looked good on the ground in preseason. He has looked. He caught a nice 45-yard reception yesterday. I don't really care about stats in the preseason, but it was good to see him getting involved and mixed up and, and uh, break off explosive plays. And Big Ben, I, I'll tell you what, Big Ben... Not going to lie, he looked pretty fucking good yesterday. So I'm a little bit more enthusiastic about this Pittsburgh Steelers team as a whole, this offense as a whole, just because 
No one's banged up. Everyone seems to be running smoothly. And Najee Harris is just set up to absolutely destroy any type of volume metrics that, that we have out there for fantasy. So if the fact that you can get a guy like Najee Harris in the second round when he's going to give you first round volume is craziness to me, okay? Najee Harris is going to see a minimum of 350 touches this year. He is going to play on 80% of the snaps, see an 80% opportunity share, and it is clear as day. Nothing they have done so far this offseason and in the preseason games says otherwise. It's Najee Harris, it's Najee Harris, and it's Najee Harris in this backfield. Najee Harris in the second round is a must-draft fantasy running back. Moving on, okay? Say you go with a wide receiver in round one or a tight end in round two or three or whatever, and you're looking for back-of-the-draft type running backs that will give you volume and will give you every other week touchdown upside, look no further than Mr. Damian Harris. I've been on the Damian Harris bandwagon since, I don't know, April, May, whatever. Damian Harris has played the part, he has looked the part, and now he is use getting the usage of that part so far this preseason in starter snaps Damian Harris is dominating all of the early down and goal line work first of all for the for those of y'all that are talking about Ramondre Stevenson no one liked him more than I did going into uh the draft process Ramondre Stevenson hasn't played a single snap with the starters in preseason he is not going to be a thing this year it's exciting if you drafted him in like the third fourth round of your dynasty drafts he is not a thing this year it is Damian Harris there's like the whole 1a 1b reports and rumors going on about those two Damian Harris and Sony Michelle the 1a 1b they they're, they're, Sony Michelle's getting like no run with the first team. It's Damian Harris, and then James White is coming in on third downs, pass catching situations. I'm not, you know, we're not confused by that. We understand that that's going to be the whole thing with the Patriots backfield, as it always has been. The, the problem with the Patriots backfield, mostly, right? You always say it's a committee. It always has been a committee, but it's because they've always thrown a random guy like a Rex Burkhead in there who will take seven carries and five targets away. Now it seems to be a two-man show. It is Damian Harris and it is James White. This offense is going to be a lot better. People underestimate the Patriots offensive line. It's the reason they're one of the best teams in the NFL year over year because they adapt on the offensive line and that's such an important piece of having a, a smoothly running offense. Last year they finished in the top five in terms of graded offensive lines per PFF and they are going into the season with a top five graded offensive line per PFF. Again, this is going to be a much better offense. Cam is going to be much better. He looked much better last week in the preseason. He just looked bad after the, after he got COVID last year. Something was wrong with him, man. And even if it's Mac Jones, Mac Jones has looked great this preseason as well. So this offense with new weapons, you know, Aguilar coming in, Kendrick Bourne and Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith and, and uh, Jacoby Myers really showing out as like the wide receiver one there. He is a must draft fucking wide receiver for sure, for sure. This offense is going to be humming. And we saw Damian Harris get the goal line carry. I think, I think Damian Harris, basically the second half of last year, we saw Damian Harris Harris getting 14 to 15 carries a game, and that's going to come straight into 2021. Damian Harris is going to be the early down guy there and the goal line guy there. Say whatever that means for Cam Newton. I think they're going to try to keep Cam a little bit healthier this year. I think they try to uh, make sure he's not running as much. So I do think Damian Harris is going to be fine in terms of volume. I think Damian Harris is going to get 15 carries a game. I think he has eight touchdown. I think he's going to score eight touchdowns. I think with a little bit of touchdown luck, maybe he gets into the double digit range. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody fucking knows anything when it comes to fantasy football realistically, but I love what we've seen from Damian Harris. He is dominating first team snaps, touches, carries, goal line touches. Damian Harris, must draft player that you can get in the seventh or eighth round of your fantasy drafts. And in that same range, <coughs> Trey Sermon, right? This is the guy I was talking about that is playing later on tonight, or if, it, if I end up releasing this on Monday, then... Uh, you watched the Niners play last night. I don't know if Mostert's going to play in this game, but he has not played in preseason so far. Trey Sermon is one of my favorite rookie backs coming out in this class. I've had him ranked as the RB4, you know, when it was it was Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Javante Williams. Trey Sermon's been my RB4 for months and months and months before it was cool to put him as your RB4. Before, before, when, when Kenneth Gainwell was everybody's RB4, I had Trey Sermon there. And Trey Sermon is a guy that fits into that mold of like Kareem Hunt, Josh Jacobs, uh, very much like Damian Harris, where he's not the biggest or the fastest or the most explosive, but he's got workhorse size, like 215 plus pounds, and his vision, burst, and agility, those scores, those athletic measurables are really, really high. And what that does is it turns those three-yard carries into seven or eight-yard carries. It, it eats up those chunk plays. And before you know it, you're 16 for 95 on the ground because you have really good bursts. So you, you see a hole, which there are plenty of those in the 49ers offense. And because you have good burst and agility, you pivot to the hole that you see, and you could explode through it and get past the first line of 
uh, D lineman, first line linebackers, whatever, which equates to those bigger chunk plays. He's not going to he's not going to bust off 45, 50 yard runs like Raheem Mostert will, but he'll keep being the early down back that gets 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 carries a game and have really, really high efficiency marks on those. Raheem Mostert, phenomenal football player. I wish Raheem Mostert was on my team. I wish he was on the Falcons. He would have been a perfect fucking fit for us. A guy that's going to get 8 to 10 touches and can break off big, big, big plays. Raheem Mostert has basically every fucking red flag in the book, though, when we look at fantasy running backs. One, 29 years old. Two, never had more than 137 carries in a season. Three, has never had more than 16 receptions in a season. So we're talking about a guy that's not going to get goal line work, a guy that's not going to get pass catching work, a guy that literally just gives you explosive plays. He's been in the NFL for six seasons, has appeared in more than nine games one time. He weighs 186 pounds. Over the last three seasons, he has dealt with a shoulder strain, an arm fracture, a knee sprain, and a high ankle sprain. He was reportedly already dealing with something in his knee and was wearing a brace at training camp, hasn't played in any of the preseason games. In 2020, Mostert turned six goal line carries into zero touchdowns and negative two yards. That is the case against Mostert. You should not be drafting Mostert anywhere near where he's going, seventh, eighth round in fantasy football drafts. Trey Sermon presents not only early down upside because he's taking all of the first team snaps and all the first string starter plays in the preseason while Mostert's out. Goal line carries are so important in this offense. Do you remember how many games like Jeff Wilson just randomly runs off for three touchdowns. All these big random thumpers end up having multi-touchdown games. Trey Sermon is w- Trey Sermon is the best big back they've had in San Fran since Carlos Hyde. And I want to touch on that because people talk about Kyle Shanahan's running back by committee usage. He only uses a committee because all his dudes like Mostert keep getting hurt. But do you remember Devonta Freeman in Atlanta was the RB1, averaged over 24 opportunities per game under Shanahan. Carlos Hyde, who I think is super similar to Trey Sermon in terms of physical stature and ability and just like an above average running back in nearly every category of being a running back. Carlos Hyde had 240 carries and 88 targets under Shanahan in San Francisco. 88 fucking targets. Carlos Hyde is not a pass catching. No one considers Carlos Hyde to be a pass catching back. No one considers Trey Sermon to be a pass catching back. But if you're going to give a guy like when when Shanahan feels like he's got a workhorse in his backfield, he is not afraid to use him accordingly. Listen, I think his floor is fine. His floor is not going to win you leagues. But I think overall, this offense, another reason to gamble on a guy like Trey Sermon is this offense with Trey Lance, with Trey Lance running shit, right? He's going to be on the field sooner rather than later, has top five, top three upside in terms of just pure scoring offense. They're going to be so good when Trey Lance gets under center and you want the starting running back. That's all I'm saying. Trey Sermon has really, really, really high upside because he's competing with a guy that takes almost no valuable fantasy touches away. Mostert's really like an early down thumper that's 185 pounds. He's explosive, but he doesn't get goal line work. He doesn't get pass catching work. That's going to be Trey Sermon's, man. And I'm fucking super excited to see this kid on the field. So Trey Sermon is the third and final back on this list. My must own running back list right now, based on what we've seen this far in preseason, is Najee Harris, Damian Harris, Trey Sermon couple Harris's and a Sermon brother, right? We preaching out here today. So I love those dudes. Let's talk a little bit about Miles Gaskin. So last week we saw the usage of the first team Dolphins offense and Malcolm Brown got the start. Malcolm Brown out snapped Miles Gaskin. Yes, probably overreacted a little bit, but I, I want you guys to understand this. You can e- equally, equally say that Miles Gaskin took over the starting role in week two and still think the pendulum is going to swing a little bit too far in the other in the other direction. OK, here's what I want to get across. This is the same thing I've been talking about in preseason. Every time I talk about preseason, we don't care about the statistics. If you're looking at the box score in preseason, you're doing it wrong. Because you don't know who's playing on the other side of the ball, right? Like, Miles Gaskin looked phenomenal yesterday. He was playing against the Falcons' ratchet-ass defense and mainly second-string defense. Any run, Like, Salvin Ahmed went on the field and looked great. Malcolm Brown went on the field and looked great. I want you to objectively look at the usage. That is the most important thing when it comes to preseason. Now, Miles Gaskin led the team in snaps. He was the starter. 19 snaps for Gaskin, 13 for Salvin Ahmed, 5 for Malcolm Brown. So while he looked great, and he scored a touchdown, and he was catching passes. I was never arguing against Miles Gaskin catching passes. I always said he was the best pass catching back in the backfield. It was going to be a fine PPR play. But this is still very much a running back by committee. If you could take out the vision of him playing against Atlanta and not look at the box score, you see that he was playing on 51% of the snaps, okay? And don't say, oh, he got taken out after the first two drives. He was literally in on the last play of the first half. So no, he was just being rested because the other backs are going to form a committee here. So it's Gaskin. Salvin Ahmed, Malcolm Brown. This is going to be a three-back committee. Miles Gaskin will lead them. 
will lead them in targets. We don't know what's going to happen on the goal line. We really don't. He did get a goal line carry yesterday, which was good to see. But again, I don't want y'all getting wrapped up in the box score. Will Miles Gaskin move up the rankings? A little bit. But again, objectively, he played on 51% of the snaps, and he is in a timeshare with two other running backs. He got a lot of targets. And again, I think it's worth noting that Devonta Parker, uh, Will Fuller, Preston Williams, all these guys were not playing yesterday. So we'll look at what happens in the next preseason game. But Every indication is that Gaskin is not going to get as much play time as he did last year in the games where he was getting 18, 20 touches a game. I just don't think that's reasonable. I don't think that's realistic. I still think he's a very, very poor pick in the fifth round of fantasy drafts. Just because he had a good game against the Falcons' second string defense in preseason does not make him a good fantasy pick. Did I jump the gun? Yes, but it was only based on the fucking usage of me saying that, yes, they're going to use a committee. And they had Malcolm Brown starting. And they had Malcolm Brown on the goal line. And they had Malcolm Brown in on third down. Is Miles Gaskin going to be the pass catcher? Of course he's going to be the pass catcher. That was never in question. Is Miles Gaskin going to get 70% of the snaps? No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. I'm telling you. Fifth round, Miles Gaskin. The pendulum is going to swing so far back because he had this good game against the Falcons that he's probably going to become overrated again. Okay? That is my take on it. So fuck y'all for DMing me and commenting about Miles Gaskin yesterday. All y'all, your your guys, it felt like half of your guys' weekend literally revolved around finding videos that I talked about Miles Gaskin and commenting on it. But I love you. That's it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And you can cop the draft guide, which has all of our must draft players, literally every single position, bunch of players per each position. You've got our favorite sleepers. We've got our all fade list. Uh, we've got our rankings, of course, our top 200 big board and PPR, half PPR standard, super flex, one quarterback scoring all up on BDGE.store. I'm out. I love y'all. See you tomorrow.